Hey, welcome back. We are cloning Pop the Log game. And last time we have finished some of the basic uh, lose events. So now when the dot is missed and we have shown the red screen, we would like to load the same level again after a while. And to do that, I'll create a new method called load same level in my game manager. And I'm not incrementing the level. I just reset the remaining dots and set is first tab to true. So I have this event called load game event and it works fine. When we raise it, we can increment the levels. And I think this should be renamed to load next game event. Now I'm gonna create a new event called load same game event. And in my manager, I listen for this new event using the listener component. And when this is raised, we would like to call the load same level method. And we would also like the camera to reset back to green. So I'll also add a listener on the camera and listen for the same event. And when it's raised, I'll change back to the start color. If we test now, you can see that the color and remaining dots are reset properly, but the paddle is still at the old position. We can fix that by going to the paddle and add an event listener and listen for the same game load event. And using the same object, I'll just choose the anchored motor reset position. And now when we play and raise this event, you can see that everything works fine. So we have now designed the response for this event and it's all working. Now the question is, how can we raise this event? To do that, let's go back to our lock animation where the animation ends. And I'll go a bit out further and add an animation event. And this can be used to call a method. And if you remember, we created this event invoker to invoke an event but it currently only invokes the game load event. Ideally, we would want this class to be able to raise any event that is passed. So let's refactor this. I'll change the name of the variable and the name should be more generic. I want to do something like passing a game event in the raise event method so I can choose at runtime what event I want to invoke. But I think Unity doesn't support that in the animation event yet. Okay, what if I pass a boolean in the method? Nope. Booleans is also not supported. Okay. Uh, I know that int is supported, but I don't know why Unity doesn't support Booleans in Unity animation events. Let me also go to my win animation to fix the event since I changed the name. Okay, I have an idea. What if we change this to event1 and call this method raise1 and then create one more method to raise another event. Yeah, this is, this seems really stupid, but let's go with it. Hmm. Okay. I have a better idea. Let's remove this and let's pass in the index in raise method. And we'll make this a list of game events and we'll raise the one that matches the index. Now this invoker takes an array. So we pass in our events and then go to win animation and raise the zeroth one, which is the next game event. And in the lose animation, we raise the index one event. To be honest, I don't like this weird approach, but let's go on. We'll try to fix this later if needed. And this seems to be working fine. Let's reset the game data and test again. So there's a bug that paddle doesn't stop. And I think this method is missing. And we don't need this since we are handling this is running in the manager. So I'll go to the manager and add a listener and listen for the win event. And for the response, I'll call the stop game method. Let's reset and test again. And now the paddle stops nicely. So that's good. I think the next thing to fix is that when the next level is loaded, we can't continue by tapping. And that's because if I turn on the debug mode, you can see that the is first tap is still false. And this should be true for the new level. So to fix this, let's go to the game manager and in my load next level method, I'll set this boolean to true. Reset the level and test again. And yeah, now it works. We can tap to start in the next level. If you notice there's some issue with the paddle direction, the next level for some reason starts with the paddle moving in the opposite direction. I think the paddle is keeping the last tap direction causing this issue but we don't need to fix it right now because uh, it's not causing any trouble. So let's clean up a bit. I think we don't need the score updater class anymore so we can delete that and nothing is broken, great. Also, let's create a folder for the UI system and move our UI files in it. 
event invoker should go in the event system and and also in the dot detector class i saw this method which i think we can abstract out like the one in anchored motor into a property called did tap i think this looks much cleaner and meaningful i'll also create a prefab from dot and remove the old one from the scene Okay, let's start implementing the dot spawning system. I'll create a game object called dot spawner and I'll, I'll also attach a new component with the same name. Now we need to keep a reference to the anchored motor because we have to spawn dots around the motor. So uh, I'll make it a public variable. And we also need the dot prefab variable. So write that. Let's now create a public method called spawn. And inside that, I'll just instantiate the dot prefab at some position and some rotation and also make it the child of motors parent. As for the position, I'm not sure what to use. So let's try to use the transform position for now. And for rotation, just uh, identity is fine, I guess. Let's see what happens. I'll drop the prefab here and we'll again use the event system. I'll add a new listener that listens for the load next game event and in response we'll call the spawn method and we'll also need to spawn for the load same game event too so i'll add one more listener and call the spawn again and one more listener when the dot is scored so that we can spawn the next dot when the old dot is uh, destroyed okay okay i'll drag the dot scored event and drag the same object and for response i'll again choose the spawn method so when we test and raise some event, you can see that the dots are spawning properly. I think I also want to spawn one dot right at the start. So I'll just call this spawn method manually once in the start method. And there we have at least one dot when the game loads. As for the position, how about using the motors transform position? Yeah, it seems to work. And we also want to offset the distance uh, randomly from the paddle or motor. So let's save this in a variable and we'll rotate this game object using rotate around with the spawner position as the center. And the axis is forward and maybe set the angle to 45 degrees. And yeah, the dot looks to be rotated properly. That's good. Now we want the dot to always spawn in the direction of paddle and never behind. So. I'll just multiply this angle with the motor direction and also cast this to an int. I noticed that the naming is wrong. I usually keep my public variables a capital case. So just a quick rename here and let's test. There's this duplicate dot issue and also the dots are spawning in the other direction. Uh, that, I think this can be fixed by adding a negative sign in our equation. Yeah, now it works fine. and. I'm gonna fix that duplicate dot issue later. We should make this angle a bit random between two values. So let's create an angle variable and make it a random value between let's say, I don't know, 20 and 120 degrees and just multiply that here. Also, we might wanna check for the existing dot since we are getting some duplicates. So let's first also change the parent here and make the dot child of the spawner to make it simpler. Okay. So for the duplicate issue, what if we keep a game object variable, say active dot, and then when we spawn, we set the new object to active dot. And we only spawn if the active dot is null, otherwise we just ignore. Okay, now we have a problem. The second dot is not spawning. What if we destroy the active dot instead of the null check? Null reference error. To fix that, we just need to do a null check here as this might be null. Okay, so this looks fine. Uh, there seems to be no duplicates, but there is one last extra dot spawned even after the level is cleared. Hmm. Okay, how can I know when the player has scored all the dots? Let's have a reference to the game data here and we will only spawn if the remaining dots are greater than zero. Mm, I hope this fixes the issue. Let's drop the game data and see. The last extra dot is still spawned, so we haven't fixed it yet, and I'm not sure why. Let's debug. Let me just reset the game data and test from the beginning. Okay, so the win event spawns the dot properly. How about scored event? The scored event is not spawning the dots. 
why is that i think it's time to refactor my event logic since it's getting a bit confusing now uh, i think this is one of the side effects of using events that things can get a bit confusing sometimes okay let's start by renaming our events lose event can be dot missed and this could be dot scored and this level cleared also from the game data i'll remove this max unlocked because we don't need that at the moment okay what else i think our event listener should be able to handle an array of events to listen to so we don't have to add multiple listener components for the same response so let's go to the event listener class and i'll make this event variable take an array of events instead and then on enable we just loop on each event and register each one of them and I'll do the same in disable. Now we can pass an array of events instead of just one. So let's fix the missing events. I'll drag the events here. Then I can just remove these extra ones. Let's see if something's broken. Okay, I think I forgot to update the manager. So drop our events here as well. And load next level will be called on level cleared and stop game on dot missed and also on level cleared. And we can remove this extra one and this one. Let's test. Okay, also the camera is missing the event, so fix that as well. Let's reset and test. The game is still broken, but at least we have cleaned up the code and there is some spawning issue, but let's, let's continue to refactor. So in the game manager script, we have these two methods to load level. I think it would be better if there is only one generic method called load level, which let's say takes a Boolean for if it's the next level or not. And I can just copy the load level logic and if it's the next level, then also increment the current level value. Now we can remove these two methods. Let's fix the missing methods now. Instead of load next level or load same level, we can use this load level method. And we'll check the boolean value if it's the next level. And for the same load level, uh, we can just keep it unchecked. I think the default value doesn't work, so I'll remove that. Let's also rename the event to say load next level and load level. And looking at the event, I think I have made a mistake. We want to load the next level on load next level event and not the level cleared event. So let's drop in our load next level here. Let's test. Yeah, so raising the load next level isn't broken. So that's good. And again, reset the game data. Now one thing I don't like here is that I have to manually edit the game data to reset it every time. It would be nice to have some kind of convenient editor button that can reset um, the game data. So let's make an editor for this. Let's open our game data class and we'll add a public method called reset data. And inside this we can set the current level to 1 and set the dots remaining to the current level. And then we can create a new folder called editor and inside this I'll create a new class called game data editor. I'll copy the editor code from the game event editor we made and just change the name to game data editor and type is game data and inside this we can fetch our class as target and then in this button called reset data we'll just call the reset method. And you can see that uh, we could be playing the game and be many levels in and then I can just go to the game data and click this reset button to reset everything. So that's pretty handy. I think we have refactored a lot. There are still some pending issues, but let's take a break here and we'll come back with a fresh mind and then try to fix these issues again. Thank you for watching. I hope you like these videos. If you have any feedback, please let me know. See you next time. Cheers.